but I want to spend a little bit today offering you a few kavanot that maybe you find meaningful, spiritual directions, and to see, without promising you anything, when there any of them help you get ready to receive Torah. And if only one of them works, um, I'm really glad I went. So only one thing. So let me remind you where we are entering the wilderness. Bimidbar Sinai, beginning of numbers. And we're entering the wilderness, and it is in the wilderness that the, where the Torah is given. Many of the commentators, including this week, Rabbi Gordon Tucker from JTS, remind us that the configuration set out in the Torah reading, sort of, if we go from maybe the tents in different directions of the encampments to recreating a structure around the Holy of Holies that in a way recreates Mount Sinai, so that we take Mount Sinai with us wherever we go. We receive Torah in the wilderness, and then we will take it wherever we go. And that tells us individually too. How do we receive Torah individually and take it wherever we go? So here we go. For Babimbar, I mean, pardon me, from Bimibar Rabbah, from the rabbinic collection of Midrashim, on, they speak to the very first word, I mean, the very first verse. Vayedaber Adonai Moshe Bimibar Sinai. And God spoke to Moshe, in the wilderness of Sinai. Why in the wilderness? Why in the Midbar of Sinai? Ella, this is to tell you, kol mi she'eno ose atzmo. Anyone who doesn't make themselves can midbar hefker, like an ownerless wilderness. Eno yacho liknod et ha v'hatorah. They are not able to acquire wisdom and to receive Torah. L'chein ne'emar. Therefore it said, b'mibar sinai. It is in the wilderness the Torah is received. How can you, how can I, how can we make yourself like a wilderness to receive Torah and wisdom? Next. Shemot Rabbah. Some of you, when I talk about, um, I imagine people must think when I talk about the service being about hearing all of the music of nature as prayer and then joining in with the moment of the Shema in, in the middle, probably say where I get that from, and it's many sources, but you will recognize it in this rabbinic commentary. Said Rabbi Abahu, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, when the Holy Blessed One gave the Torah, no bird chirped, no fowl fluttered, no ox load, the angels did not fly, the seraphim did not utter the kedusha, the sea did not roar, the creatures did not speak, the universe was silent and mute, and the voice came forth, Anochi Adonai Elohecha, I am Adonai, I am that which dwells in eternity your God. So when do you or how can you move beyond hearing the music of nature to hearing the silent one who dwells in eternity within it? For that happens in the wilderness. Another kavanah. What does the biblical word wilderness mean? Midbar. How, was it, how did it function in ancient agrarian and even maybe ancient, probably ancient Hebrew society, going all the way back? So to remind you, in case I've taught it before, a group of tents or a group of houses form, in a circle largely forms a settlement. So imagine that being this microphone, or there's a little group of houses right here. And then you have what they grow. You have the field spreading out like um, slices of a pie, like spokes of a wheel. And figure, they go out to here. They surround the, the village. So people go off to get their spoke of the wheel. Those are the fields they lease and they farm. And where that circle ends, the mead bar begins. And that's where you graze your animals. 
So for those who are shepherds, like our ancient ancestors, although some were agrarian in the land of Israel, you move beyond the town, beyond the land that is owned and leased. And then you're in nature, where your animals can graze freely and no one can own it. It's not yet the desert. And as my father liked to teach a particular uh, midrash from, um, from Shia Shirim Rabbah, what Midbar is, is that which is in between the meadow and the desert. Where do you find yourself in that space? The ownerless nature between owned civilization, cultivated civilization, and the total wild, the place where your animals and maybe you get a nourishment and a sustenance in the in-between. This quote is from Kathleen Norris from her book, Dakota, A Spiritual Geography. Here in the great plains of Dakota, the eye learns to appreciate slight variations, the possibilities inherent in emptiness. It sees that the emptiness is full of small things. A person is forced inward by the spareness of what is outward and visible in all this land and sky. Maybe seeing the plains is like seeing an icon. What seems stern and almost empty is merely open. A door into some simple and holy state. And I pair that with Talmud Sanhedrin 49a. It says in 1 Kings chapter 2 in regard to Yoav, and he was buried in his own house in the wilderness. The Talmud asks, is that to say that Yoab's house, Yoab's house was located in the wilderness? Rav Yehuda says that Rav taught Yoab's house was like the wilderness, just as the wilderness is freely open to all, hefker. So too Yoab's house was freely open to all, as he generously opened his house to the poor, and made them feel like members of the household. How can you make your home, your house, like a wilderness open to all? Is there one person who's been at the edges, at work, a neighbor, someone who's crossed paths in your life, that you can open yourself to a little bit more in this coming week? Rabbi Menachem Mendel of Videpsk. The Torah only stands firm in one who makes himself like a Midbar Hefker, an ownerless wilderness, that middle space. You have to make yourself like that before those who are poor of mind and those who are rich of mind. The one who inhabits that space doesn't think of themselves as better than their friend. On the contrary, they should be just simply open. And it is through this that they become united and bound up, one with the other. If there is someone in your life, a friend, someone, a member of the family, someone at work, someone in your, in your social circle, that you always feel a little less than when you're around them because they're the smart one, or you always feel a little bit generous to them, because they are the poor of mind. This week, make yourself a Hefger Midbar, Rabbi Menachem Mendel's sense. Just see them as exactly equal. We are two friends putting out our hands, joining with all the other Israelites at Sinai. We are all equal in how we receive Torah and learn from one another. From A.D. Gordon, labor Zionist, from 1910, The Mirror of Nature. 
When you will return to nature, on that day your eyes will be open. You will gaze straight into the eyes of nature, and in the mirror you will see your own image. You will know that you have returned to yourself, that when you hid from nature, you hid from yourself. And I pair that with just simply connecting to nature this week with Reb Zalman Shachter Shalomi, who wrote, the absence of a vital mythology for a whole and healthy earth, one shared by all peoples and species, is a cause for great concern. Earth is in a dire crisis for survival, and we have as yet no means to redream our hoped for story. There is a need for visioning the future of human spirituality in harmony with our wilderness understanding. I think that's the closest to the beard growing. And finally, ending with the Talmud, Tractate Nidarim Vows, 55a. Why is it written, and from wilderness a gift? And Shavuot, from wilderness a gift, Matan Torah, is given to us. Why is it written in From Wilderness a Gift? When a person makes oneself like wilderness, which is free to all, Torah is given as a gift, as it says, From Wilderness a Gift. Shabbat Shalom.